So this is the 2016 Leaving Cert Higher Level Paper 1 and we're looking at question number 1. Part A says minus 4 plus 3i is one root of the equation az squared plus zz plus c equals 0. Where a, b and c are elements of the set of real numbers and i squared is negative 1. So we're asked to write the other root. Well, if we have a, a complex root for a quadratic equation and the coefficients of z squared and z are real, well then these roots occur in conjugate pairs. So if one of the roots is minus 4 plus 3i, the other root would be minus 4 minus 3i. So you would change the sign of the i component of the complex number of the other root. Okay, part B says use De Moivre's theorem to express 1 plus i to the pair of 8 in its simplest form. So this is a complex number given in uh, Cartesian form, a rectangular form, and we want to use De Moivre's theorem to express it in its simplest form. So De Moivre's theorem can be found in the tables book. Uh, so that's De Moivre's theorem there. So with De Moivre's theorem, what we need to do is we need to express the complex number in polar form first, and then apply De Moivre's theorem uh, to simplify it. So if we can imagine the number first of all, one plus i, if we just imagine it on the real imaginary axis, this is the real axis, and here's our imaginary axis. So if we can imagine the number, if that's one on the real, and let's say that's one there in the imaginary, well then one plus i or one plus one i would be over to one in the real and up to one. So if we were plotting it, it would be this point here. That's the complex number one plus i. Now, if we're going to change it to rectangular form, we need the value or, which is the modulus of that. So the, the modulus of that complex number. The modulus of a complex number is its distance from the origin. So we're looking for this distance, that's or. And we also need theta. Theta being the angle that the modulus makes with the positive real axis. So we're looking for or and then we're looking for theta. So what we do is we, if we drop this line from here down to the real axis, we've created a right angle triangle. And on this right angle triangle here, we know that this distance here, which I'm going to put in red, is a distance of 1, and this distance here is a distance of 1. So if we apply Pythagoras' theorem at this stage, we can see that this is a right angle triangle, so square on the hypotenuse or squared will be equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides will be equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared on this little right angle triangle here. So that gives us or squared is equal to 1 plus 1 which is 2. So if or squared is 2 well then or will be the square root of 2. So we found the modulus root 2. Okay, so now we need to find theta. Well, if this angle here is theta, we can use the trigonometric ratio sin, cos, or tan to help us. So I'm just, if this is theta, then this side would be the opposite, and this side here would be the adjacent. So I can use tan the tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which is 1 over 1, the opposite over the adjacent. So the tan of theta is equal to 1. Well, that means that theta will be the inverse tan of 1. And the inverse tan of 1 on your calculator, make sure your calculator is set to radians when you're doing this. Um, you, I mean, you can you can do it in degrees as well, but it's easier to keep things in radians. So theta is equal to a quarter pi. 
or that's just the same as pi over 4. So now we have the modulus or and we have the angle theta. So now we're going to put them in. We're going to uh, rewrite this uh, complex number 1 plus i now in rectangular form. So 1 plus i is equal to or cos theta plus i sine theta. So that would be root 2 cos pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. Okay, so if 1 plus i is equal to this, well, 1 plus i to the power of 8 will be equal to all of this to the power of 8. Plus i sine pi over 4. And that's all to the power of 8. Okay, so we've now expressed 1 plus i to the power of 8 in polar form. And it's now that we can apply the De Moivre's theorem, the theorem of De Moivre. So if we see up here, I'm just going to color code this view. We can see that the OR value is this one. We can see that theta is there. And we can see our power, 8, is this N value here. So then when we look across to the application of De Moivre, the n is going to come out here as a power of the or, and it will also go in front of the theta in both places. And then we're going to have our or still there, and we're going to have our theta there and there. So, you can say that that is equal to root 2 to the power of n, which is 8 in this case, by the cos of n, which is 8, so it'll be 8 times pi over 4. So it'll be 8 pi over 4 plus pi sine. 8 pi over 4. So we can then uh, put some of this into our calculator. So if we put root 2 to the power of 8 into our calculator, well that gives us 16. And then if we put cos of 8 pi over 4 in our calculator, that gives us one plus i by sine eight pi over four which is zero. So that's one plus i zero. And that's equal to zero i, or i times zero is just zero. So it's 16 times one, which is 16. So we've now simplified one plus i to the power of eight to 16. And that's the end of part B. And part C says one plus i is a root of the equation z squared plus minus two plus i z plus three minus i equals zero. Find its other root in the form m plus ni, where m and n are elements of the set of real numbers, and again, i squared is equal to negative 1. Okay, so this is not a case uh, this time, like part a, where the root will be the conjugate of 1 plus i. That is because the coefficients, coefficient of z here is, is not real. It's a complex coefficient. So this equation here, however, is in the shape of a quadratic. You can see there's a z squared term, a z term, 
and the term at the end with no z and it's equal to zero so what we can do is apply the quadratic formula here to try and find the roots one of which is already given but we should be able to find the other root so the quadratic formula is in your tables book so that's the quadratic formula there and with the quadratic formula we know that our b value which I'll put in green will be the coefficient of z term the c value will be the term at the end and the a value which will be the invisible one in front of that z squared will be there and there so you can just imagine a one in there in the yellow position so we're going to substitute these now in here to find our roots so our roots, and the roots are uh, z rather than x. So z is equal to minus b, which is minus 2 plus i, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is minus 2 plus i squared, minus 4 times ac, a being 1, and c being 3 minus i and that's all going to be over 2a which will be twice 1 okay so now we're just going to have to tidy this up a bit out here the minus by minus 2 becomes positive 2 and minus by minus i becomes minus i plus or minus the square root of minus 2 plus i squared that's going to be minus in fact I'm going to do this off to the side here minus 2 plus i squared will be minus 2 plus i by itself so that's going to give us minus 2 by minus 2 is 4 i by minus 2 is minus 2i i by minus there is minus 2i and finally i by i is minus i squared so that's going to give us 4 the minus 2i and the minus 2i become minus 4i and i squared is negative 1 so minus i squared would be minus negative 1 which is positive 1 and that gives me 4 and the 1 combined to give me 5 minus 4i so this will be five minus four i instead of minus two plus i squared now I've worked that out and then we're gonna have minus four by one is minus four so minus four by three is minus twelve and minus 4 by minus i is positive 4i and that's all going to be over 2 times 1 which is 2 so simplifying again that gives me 2 minus i plus or minus the square root of minus 4i and 4i give me 0 so I'm just left with 5 minus 12 which is Sorry, there's a little mistake here. If we just go back over here, when I multiplied i by i, it gave me i squared positive, not negative. So positive i squared. And positive i squared is a minus 1. So instead of plus 1 here, we have minus 1. And 4 minus 1 there gives me 3 minus 4i instead. So this 5 here, following the mistake through, is incorrect. So that's 3. So 3 minus 12 actually gives me 3 minus 12 is minus 9. And again, that's all over 2. Okay, so we're making progress. 
that is going to be equal to 2 minus i plus or minus root minus 9. Well, root minus 9, that's equal to root 9 by root minus 1. You can split this third into two other thirds. And we know root 9 is 3. And root of minus 1 is i. That's the definition of i. So that becomes 3i. So over here we have 2 minus i plus or minus 3i all over 2. Okay, so now we'll try and do two different answers now. So the first one is 2 minus i plus 3i over 2. And that's equal to 2 minus i plus 3i is plus 2i. So it becomes 2 plus 2i all over 2. And that's equal to we can divide above and below by 2, so 2 into 2 goes once here and here as well. So leaving me with 1 plus 1i or 1 plus i. So that's one of the roots and that actually that's actually the root that was given in the answer, or in the question rather, 1 plus i at the top. So now here we're going to look at the other one when you have 2 minus i minus 3i this time instead, all over 2. That gives me 2 minus i minus 3i. Well, that's 2 minus 4i over 2. That's equal to 1, 1. And 2 into this goes twice. So we have the other answer as 1 minus 2i. So that's the other root. And that's the end of part C and the end of question 1.